Today we're going to take a closer look at the MD flight control system. The MD series is known for its lightweight, direct, and relatively simple design. Unlike many larger helicopters, this aircraft does not use hydraulics to assist the pilot with the controls. Instead, it relies on a fully mechanical system. This design choice makes the helicopter easier to maintain and keeps its reliability in the field. But it also means the pilot feels more direct connection to the rotor system. What we will do in this video is break down the collective, the cyclic, the mixer assembly, and the swash plate, and explain not only what each component does, but also how they interact as a complete system. Let's start with the collective. The collective is the control that changes the pitch angle of all five rotor blades at the same time and by the same amount. When the pilot raises the collective, all five blades increase their pitch together, producing more lift and causing the helicopter to climb, provided the engine delivers enough power to support that lift. Lowering the collective decreases the blade pitch, reduces lift, and allows the helicopter to descend. It is called collective because all the blades change collectively in unison. The pilot's collective lever is more than just a stick. On the grip, there is a twist throttle that allows the pilot to control engine power directly. In normal operation, the governor automatically matches engine power to the load on the rotor system, but the twist grip allows for manual control or fine adjustments. The grip also includes several switches, such as a starter button, a landing light, a governor trim switch, and an idle stop release. Each of these functions is placed here for convenience so the pilot can manage them without letting go of the collective. There is also a friction adjustment knob on the collective. This allows the pilot to add or remove resistance in the lever. The purpose is not to lock the control in place, but to keep it from drifting due to vibration or light bumps from the pilot's arm. In addition, the system uses a bungee spring assembly. Without this spring, the forces on the collective would vary a lot depending on its position. At low pitch settings, the control might feel very light, while at high pitch settings, it would become very heavy. The bungee helps equalize these forces, giving the pilot a more consistent feel through the entire range of collective movement. This consistency is important because it reduces pilot workload and makes precise control easier. Now let's move on to the cyclic. While the collective controls how much overall lift the rotor system produces, the cyclic controls the direction of that lift. The cyclic stick is located in front of the pilot and can be moved in any direction. Pushing it forward tilts the rotor disc forward and causes the helicopter to fly forward. Pulling it aft tilts the disc backward, producing rearward lift. Moving the cyclic left or right tilts the disc to the side, rolling the aircraft in that direction. What makes the cyclic different from the collective is that it does not change all blade pitches equally. Instead, it changes the pitch of each blade depending on where the blade is and its rotation around the mast. This differential control is what allows the rotor disc to tilt in the desired direction. For example, when you push the cyclic forward, the blade pitch increases on one side of the disc and decreases on the opposite side. The net result is that the disc tilts forward and the helicopter begins to move in that direction. The pilot cyclic stick contains a trim switch that operates an electric trim system. The trim system uses small electric actuators to adjust spring tension in the cyclic control path. By doing this, the trim system can change the stick's neutral position. This allows the pilot to relieve control pressures during flight. For example, if the helicopter is in cruise and requires a slight forward stick pressure to maintain level flight, the trim system can be used to eliminate that constant pressure. The co-pilot cyclic, on the other hand, is a simpler stick without trim or friction controls, but it is mechanically connected so that either pilot can fly the helicopter. One important aspect of the cyclic system is how it handles feedback forces from the rotor. Because the controls are fully mechanical and not hydraulically assisted, the pilot would normally feel every force and vibration transmitted from the rotor head. To prevent excessive workload, the system includes a longitudinal one-way lock. This prevents aft feedback forces from reaching the pilot. Without this lock, the pilot might have to resist significant aft stick pressures, especially in certain flight conditions. In addition, the trim actuators I mentioned earlier help counteract feedback forces in all directions, making the control smoother and less fatiguing to operate. Now that we have discussed the collective and cyclic, let's take a look at how these inputs come together in the mixer assembly. The mixer is essentially the mechanical brain of the flight control system. It receives inputs from both the collective and cyclic and combines them into one coordinated set of control rod movements that will eventually drive the swash plate. One of the mixer's most important jobs is compensating for gyroscopic precession. In any rotating system, when you apply a force to the disc, the maximum effect occurs about 90 degrees later in the direction of rotation. 
This is a fundamental principle of rotorcraft aerodynamics. For example, if you want the rotor disc to tilt forward, you can't simply increase blade pitch and direction at the front of the disc. Instead, the change must occur earlier in the rotation so that the aerodynamic effect peaks at the correct point. The geometry of the mixer assembly takes this into account. Its linkages are designed so that when the pilot moves the cyclic forward, the control rods move in a way that produce the desired disc tilt. Even though the actual blade pitch changes are applied 90 degrees in advance of where the effect is needed. After the mixer assembly, the control inputs travel through a series of push-pull tubes and bell cranks to reach the swash plate. These are mechanical linkages that transmit motion without the use of cables or hydraulics. The push-pull tubes are rigid rods that move forward and backward, and the bell cranks are small pivoting levers that change the direction of that motion. This arrangement allows the flight controls to route cleanly around the helicopter structure while still delivering precise inputs. Because the system is fully mechanical, accuracy and rigging is critical. Each linkage is built to the exact length specifications and each pivot must be maintained with minimal play. If any of the bell cranks or rods develop looseness, the slop adds up across the system and the pilot will notice a delay or softness in the controls. That is why during inspections, mechanics carefully check rod ends, bearings, and attachment points for wear. Smooth, precise movement of the push-pull system is essential to keeping the helicopter responsive and safe. Finally, we come to the swash plate assembly. The swash plate is the critical component that translates the stationary control system into the rotating rotor system. It consists of two main parts, the stationary swash plate and the rotating swash plate. The stationary swash plate is linked to the control rods coming from the mixer. The rotating swash plate is mounted on top of it, connected by a bearing. This allows it to rotate freely with the mast and rotor system while still following the tilting and vertical movement of the stationary portion. When we talk about the swash plate assembly, it is important to also mention the stationary and rotating scissors. These linkages are what make the system function correctly. The stationary scissors connect the non-rotating part of the swash plate to the helicopter structure, keeping it from turning with the mass. At the same time, the rotating scissors connect the rotating swash plate to the mass so that it spins with the rotor system. This arrangement allows the stationary swash plate to move up and down or tilt as commanded by the controls, while the rotating swash plate turns with the rotor and passes these control movements along to the pitch links. In other words, the scissors assemblies are what separate the stationary and the rotating worlds while still keeping them synchronized. Without the stationary and rotating scissors, the swash plate will not be able to deliver control inputs to the blades while the rotor system is turning. When the pilot moves the cyclic, the stationary swash plate tilts in the direction commanded. Because the rotating swash plate is linked to it, it tilts as well. And this tilt changes the blade pitch as each blade rotates around the mast. The result is that the rotor disc tilts in the desired direction, producing forward, aft, or lateral flight. In short, the swash plate is the interface between the pilot's controls and the rotating rotor blades. It allows complex, constantly changing blade pitch adjustments to be applied smoothly and precisely, all while the system is spinning at hundreds of revolutions per minute. Without the swash plate, controlled flight in a helicopter would not be possible. So to summarize everything that we have covered, the collective changes the pitch of all blades equally to control climb and descent. The cyclic changes blade pitch depending on the rotational position to tilt the rotor disc and control direction. The mixer assembly combines these inputs and compensates for gyroscopic effects, ensuring that the disc responds correctly to the pilot's commands. Finally, the swash plate transfers those commands into the rotating rotor system, where the pitch links move each blade exactly as needed. Understanding how these systems work is essential for both pilots and maintainers. For a pilot, it is important to know not just what each control does, but why it feels the way it does and how forces are managed within the system. For a maintainer, understanding the mixer geometry, the swash plate function, and the purpose of each spring and actuator helps in troubleshooting and ensuring that the aircraft remains safe and responsive.